Welcome to CS Guitars, the science of loud. Have you ever been shopping for a pedal power supply and been like, I need 10 9 volt outputs? And then all of the 10 output supplies on the market were like, psych, two of those outputs are 18 volts and one of them is AC for some reason. You're only getting seven 9 volt outs. That's happened to me too, and I've always thought, if I could just customise my own power supply to have the number of outputs at the voltages I need, this would be so much simpler. Fortunately for us all, such a power supply now exists. If you're into DIY and you want a fully customisable modular power supply, then I can introduce you to the Anasounds FX power source. I know that many of you grabbed one of the Anasounds Ego Driver DIY overdrive pedals after I featured it on this channel a couple of months ago, and if you enjoyed both this build and the extensive educational documentation that came along with it, you're going to love this power supply. Save yourself some time, go into the description, click on the link and buy one right now. You know you're going to be doing it by the end of the video anyway. What we have here is a kit build for a modular, customisable power supply. What happens if you need more outputs? You just add more supply boards. This will support up to 60 9 volt outputs. Each of these boards contains two outputs which can deliver 100 milliamps a piece, or 200 milliamps if only one is used, and you can select the voltage you need for each board, either 9, 12, or 18 volts. With this, you can mix and match voltages and output numbers so you can get exactly what you need for your pedals. No longer do you have to question if the power supply that you are purchasing today will be able to suit your board tomorrow. This is future proof. You want to expand out your pedal collection? Add more supply boards. Your new pedal needs 12 volts? Just add a 12 volt board. If you're downsizing, you can take some of these supply boards away. It's basically limitless. 100 milliamps is more than enough for the majority of analog pedals on the market, and a great number of digital pedals will operate at less than 200 milliamps. But if you simply need more current, then Anasound also offers the K-plus system, which gives a colossal 2 amps per output. And this is completely compatible with the DIY option, meaning you can use this as an expansion for the K-plus system. But let's get to building ourselves one of these and we can talk a little bit more about the technology as we go. Included in this kit, we have a 24 volt in board, allowing you to connect the 24 volt AC to DC power brick that will supply the rest of the PCBs. A 24 volt through board, this allows you to pass 24 volts out to a second Anasounds power supply if you are wanting to expand out with a K plus or another DIY unit. Supply boards. These contain the filtering and sockets for each output stage. And the 9, 12 or 18 volt kits. These contain the voltage regulator chip and the resistors required to turn each supply board into the voltage you desire. There are labels on the supply boards to mark which voltage you've selected it to be, but these become obscured when fully constructed, so you may wish to find a more visible means of labeling these in order to avoid over voltage accidents later down the line. Just like the Ego Driver we looked at a few months ago, there is comprehensive documentation available for free through Anasound's website, which will take you through each step of the process and show you how to test your work as you go so that you can get it right the first time. The 24 volt inboard is very simple, containing only two components you need to worry about. A diode for polarity protection, this will protect your supply and all your pedals if the wrong power is inserted and a large capacitor which works both as a filter and a reservoir, ensuring there is always a store of energy in case there's a sudden peak demand on the supply. The 24 volt through board is even simpler. There's just one component here really, a protection diode, should you stupidly use this as a power in rather than a power out. The supply boards is where the complexity lies. As power comes into the board, it first hits a resettable thermal fuse which will disconnect the supply if the pedals ever start drawing too much current. After a period of cool down, the power supply will operate normally again. Another diode protects against polarity inversion if you assemble the supply boards the wrong way around. 
a pair of electrolytic capacitors and the resistors from the voltage kit form a filtering circuit for the stabilising and cleaning the power and doing a little bit of voltage reduction. Next comes the voltage regulator of choice for the output voltage you require. This will provide a stable, consistent voltage regardless of the current draw of the device. It does need to dissipate additional energy as heat in this process, so is soldered to a wide pad on the board to act as a heat sink. This uses voltage regulators and some carefully designed filtering to keep the power as clean as possible and prevent any fluctuations in the power line introduced by digital pedals which can often cause noise. The external 24 volt power brick keeps the AC-DC conversion far away from your pedals, eliminating 50 or 60 cycle hum being injected into your signal from the power which can be a real threat when using transformer isolated supplies. A second advantage of using the external power brick is that this keeps all of the dangerous and potentially lethal mains voltages away from the DIY kit you are building, making this completely safe and you don't need to be a qualified spark to construct it. No power supply technology is perfect, there's always going to be cons to balance the pros. The use of voltage regulators limits the current to 200 milliamps per board, but that's still enough to power the vast majority of pedals available on the market. While the 9 volt lines are isolated in this design thanks to the voltage regulators, the ground is still common, so ground loops are still a potential hazard, although I find that these are far less prominent an issue than 50 Hz noise. Transformer isolated designs obviously isolate the ground, but by using transformers they bring AC power very close to the pedals, which is inviting 50 Hz noise being injected into your signal, so each system has its trade-off. We'll be talking very in-depth about different power supply technologies when we come to look at the K-plus systems very soon. Finally, on the boards there are two outputs, protected again by more diodes. You need to clip the legs of these output jacks short or the whole construction will not fit together correctly when assembled. Reading the voltage at the output pins should confirm the nominal voltage for the board that we've constructed. Now that I know I have everything correct, I can make all of the remaining boards in the exact same way. Leaving the pins unsoldered until the final assembly stage is wise, as we need to alternate the order of these so it lines up correctly with the preceding board. With everything together, a final voltage test of each board confirms that all the voltages are as we intended. Now we are capable of powering a number of pedals with a DIY's power supply that we can expand and change as our pedal collection grows. The included brackets make this compatible with underboard mounting for the most popular board brands on the market. To test out the finished power supply, I've come up with this arrangement on the floor. The single 24 volt power brick is feeding the DIY supply, which then distributes to seven pedals on the board. Five at nine volts, including a digital hypergravity compressor early in the chain to test if the regulators and filtering keep the power clean. The HM2 is of the ACA era and requires 12 volts regulated to power properly. It is testing our 12 volt line. The Wampler Catapult is the only pedal I own which I know for certain can handle 18 volts, so it will be our 18 volt test. That's 7 of our 12 outputs used, still plenty of room to add more effects. Furthermore, I have two additional supply boards which I haven't built yet, and a selection of regulators which will allow me to add to this system in the future. You'll remember that we have a 24 volt through board here too. That is supplying power to the big K plus power source which can deliver 12 volts at 2 amps, perfect for powering the Victory V4 Countess. This thing has several valves inside and requires a lot of current. Our DIY supply can't achieve that on its own, but it does power a second supply that can. While the Countess isn't in the signal chain here, it is receiving power from the same line. Even running all of these at once, the effects chain is whisper quiet, absolutely no noise whatsoever on the power line, just the faint hiss of the HM2 noise floor. I didn't want to go overboard with this demonstration, keeping it instead to a usable signal chain, but even with all of this, we aren't even scratching the surface of how much we could power. <laughs> Thank you. 
once again an impressive educational resource from Anasounds which brings you up to speed on power supply technology in a very easy to understand package. This build was very straightforward, even simpler than the Ego driver I built previously, but this is not just a token project. This is a highly usable power supply and with the ability to expand this out to add the number of sockets and voltages you need makes it pretty unique in the market. If you've always struggled to find a power supply with the number of sockets required for your specific needs, then this one is for you. However, being a DIY unit which is ever physically expandable, there is no pre-made enclosure available for this, which is the only downside I can see. It does come with these brackets which are designed to be mounted to the most common pedal board brands on the market, and you could mount it as is, but I think I'd be a little bit concerned about any conductive object making its way between those boards and shorting something out. To use this in a secure fashion, you're going to have to craft your own enclosure or covers for this, but seeing as this is a DIY project, if you're gonna buy this, I don't think you're gonna be put off with drilling some holes in sheet material to make that happen. If you like what you've seen here and you're looking for your next soldering project, then links are in the description so you can check out the price or perhaps even buy one of these for yourself. Don't forget to click all the buttons you're supposed to to make this video viable to the ever-changing whims of the YouTube algorithm. Keep it loud and stay safe.